Greetings, dappling, and welcome to a new first taste for the channel where we're going to be checking out the demo for the game Apico. Now, Apico is going to be released uh, in the early part of next year. It started development, I believe, in June this year, 2020. And uh, you can already add it to your Steam wishlist at the moment, or in fact, grab the demo. The uh, links, of course, will be in the video description below. Now, what is Apico, you might ask? Well, if you haven't already noticed in the background, there's a bit of a, a bee and nature theme going on here. And Apico is a game developed by two brothers with a particular fondness for old Minecraft mods and casual and, and kind of farming games in general. And that really shows this is very much a labor of love. So we're going to jump into the game, as I believe it's always easier to show than to describe and see exactly what Apico has to offer. Counting sand. That's fantastic. Releasing the bees. Not too, too wild, though. Don't release all the bees, that tends to lead to crazy shenanigans involving Nicolas Cage. Right, okay, so we have our world here, and uh, you control your character with a wasset. Uh, welcome to Apico, let's get started. Press G to review. It actually has a really, really lovely, chilled out little uh, uh, musical um, score, which is composed by the extremely talented uh, Bordeaux official, uh, as per the information on the Apico website. Now, let's put, press uh, G and find out what there is to find out. Welcome to Apico, a game about discovering and breeding bees. There's a very uh, strong educational kind of focus uh, on bees throughout the game as well. This book will serve as your guide throughout the game. If you get stuck, lost, stung by bees, this book is here to help. You can open and close this book at any time by pressing G. You can also close all the menus in the game by pressing escape. I'm, I'm a big fan of games that allow you to instantly close all of the, the menus they have open. As you're progressing, uh, sorry, as you progress, you'll unlock new chapters, each with their own challenge and rewards. Fantastic, I'm gonna claim my bee. Uh, as this is your first chapter, you'll have a free bee. Oh, the puns. Keep her safe, her name is Beatrice. Oh, double puns. I approve. I, I groan, but I approve. All right, getting around. Wasted. Uh, when you hover your mouse cursor over anything in the world, it will bring up a tooltip. Uh, you can interact with anything around you with the cursor. You can reach quite far with those cute little arms. Uh, I, thank you. I'm blushing now. Uh, punish some trees. Pick some flowers. Scare some birds. Just go hog wild. Let's go aggro some forest spirits. Take this out. Oh, no. It's, it's already begun. Uh, why am I always a foresting in every game? Uh, different tools have different uses. You'll find more tools as you progress. When you left click on something, you will use whatever item is in your equipped active hotbar slot. Select that fancy axe we just gave you using the hotbar keys. You'll know it's equipped when it's golden and delicious. You can change your equipped slot by scrolling with the scroll wheel. And uh, now we can do some damage. Try not to think about the fact it's made of wood. I said don't think. Uh, I oh, the wooden axe. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't thinking about that until you made a big deal of it, game. Damn it, you set me up to fail. Go and craft some trees with, uh, sorry, yeah, to, to chop some trees with the axe until we've t collected 10 logs, and then we're probably gonna be uh, crafting some things. So let's go ahead and select our axe. Now, it did mention that you can cr uh, chop quite far, and that is absolutely true. Our range is about that. Oh, actually, no, it's still even further. Can we go even further? Oh my Lord. I, I'm gonna be honest. Whether you call them cute or, or not, arms this long are freakish. This is kind of an eldritch horror tentacle arm length at this point. This is no. Nevertheless, I, I do find it quite cathartic just to the uh, chopping away. So let's uh, go and grab the spoils over there. We're getting some acorns, which means we're going to be able to replant, which is very nice. We've also got some shrubbery seeds, I'm going to assume. Uh, shrub cuttings. Hold shift for info. Okay. Uh, can be planted on grass to grow into a shrub. Lovely. Okay, well, uh, I personally feel that we've got enough logs now, but I'm just going to clear up a little bit more room so that we can expand out this way in the very, very near future. And because if I don't, I'm going to feel bad. I'm going to place down some uh, shrubberies over here. Uh, there are no herrings that I'm aware of, so they should be safe. I uh, will also pop down some more trees as well. Uh, we're not going to plant all of them, but, you know, just to pop them down. And this also demonstrates how easy it is to place things. It, they are not snapping to a grid that I'm aware of. Now, that can be a double-edged sword. Uh, and if you're particularly particular about the placement of things, this may be a game that uh, will frustrate you in small doses. But I think we can all manage it. I mean, the bees are beautiful at the very least. Okay, let's go ahead and claim our new workshop. Resource Management. 
as you start the deforestation of this part, we don't. Why well, got to rub it in? Help us, world. You'll notice you're picking up a lot of different things. Don't worry, though. You can have a snag of up to 99 items per slot. While you can always see your hotbar at the top of the screen, you can open your full inventory at any time by pressing E. There doesn't appear to be any kind of um, weight limit. Left click will pick up any item in the slot and move it to any other slot. Right click will pick up half of it uh, of a stack or drop one item from the stack you have picked up. And middle mouse click on an item to collect as many of that item as you have in your inventory. Here. Have a crate to put some of your junk in. You hoarded you. I okay. Uh, fair. Not gonna lie. I feel quite called out by this, but I don't feel it's necessarily unfair to call me out on this one. All right. Okay. So this is our full inventory, and we now have a chest down here. And one of the things I love is that you can move around, and it draws a little line so you can see what chest you're interacting with. I especially like that. I especially like that one. Uh, right, so crafting. Time to get crafting. If you select the workbench we just gave you in your hotbar, you'll be able to place it nearby with the mouse. Once placed, you can click on the workbench with a left click to view the workbench crafting menu. Go and open the workbench and you'll see a recipe for the saw bench. Get yourself enough logs, craft one, and come back here. Would you kindly? Oh, no. Fun fact, the workbench takes into account all items in any open menu, so you don't need to be carrying the items to be able to craft with them. And this is something I really, really wish more games did. Uh, but I'm extremely pleased that this game does it. And, uh, okay, I'm going to try I'm gonna try so hard not to get too finicky about the placement, because you, you absolutely can. Let's pop that one over there, and I'm going to pop the logs in here just to uh, demonstrate. But in here, we can now make uh, the saw bench. We can make another workbench. We can make some more crates if I particularly want to. There are tools that we have access to. We can make an axe out of two things that we don't yet know how to make, but I've got a funny feeling we're about to find out. And that is, of course, with the the uh, saw bench. So pump, there we go. Let's uh, head back in. We are now going to get 20 logs. Marvellous, I approve. Next steps. That's all from this introduction, but don't worry. We're not going to leave you completely lost and alone with nothing but bees to keep you company. I mean, uh, that does sound great, actually. As you discover and craft new items, you'll unlock new chapters of this book, where you'll be given different challenges and rewards, so make sure to keep an eye here. Now, go, little one, be free. Oh, really? Still the buns? What? No, I'm not crying. It's just really dusty in here, that's all. Just dust! Uh, see? You should have said pollen. Ah, uh, you, you, you miss an opportunity there. But we're going to get a spangly new axe, and that's actually going to open up a lot of other chapters. But let's let's first... Have a look around. You will notice that the axe is actually losing uh, durability, which is none too great. Can I pick this back up? Mm, I cannot. I would like to, though. I would very much like to, but I believe that's going to come a little bit later. So I should have placed it outside, really, because that's a very small, small little uh, place for us in there. Now, one of the things I really, really get on with with this uh, game in particular is if we pop some um, logs in here. We have to saw them. We don't just click a button. We've got to saw it back and forth as you would a saw. There we go. We're slowly sawing these planks. Uh, sorry, these logs into planks. There we are. Now, some of the, the things you can make are automatic. So they're not all um, strictly uh, manual, but um, th those sort of ones tend not to be things like saws because, uh, let's face it, and unless you're particularly clever and uh you, you're really getting your engineer freak on and you've got some sort of water powered sawing device it's not going to be an automatic process for you there we go let's uh get all of this going though that being said i wouldn't put this game it pants this game to uh, set that up you've got to make sure you're, you're sawing properly the whole the whole length of the saw please and thank you no no uh you know one quarter of the length of the saw no you've got to put your whole arm into it to get the most out of a saw there we go. So, now that we've got this, we can build a couple of other things. In fact, we can build a lot of different things. A wooden bench, bench will let you sleep, which allows time to pass quicker, because time does matter in this game. A large crate to put stuff in. We've got all manner of new wooden tools. We've also got wooden decorations. Now, <laughs> if you think I'm not going to be decorating this place just because it's a first taste, and that would be a waste of, uh, of time that I could spend showing other things in the game, you are absolutely wrong. Because, with the power of editing, there we go. That's a bit of a, a nicer little place here. I've made two large chairs so that we've got a much larger inventory available uh, to us. And also, we now have both of our work benches inside. Now then, next, let's have a look at uh, what we can work on at this point. Now, carpentry. 
Now that you have a saw bench, you can start cutting up your logs into other materials. Ha ha I'm already one step ahead of you. Place a log into the input slot. Uh, pretty much everything in Ap uh, Apico is built from wooden planks, so best to stock up. You can further refine wooden planks into wooden sticks, which are used for crafting tools and throwing at birds trying to steal your stuff. You've got a thing against birds, don't you? But uh, nevertheless, thank you very much for those resources. Now, basic tools. To collect certain resources, you'll need the right tools for the job. You can't just go around punching trees. Oh, taking a shot, are we? Axes let you collect logs from trees and bushes. Pickaxes let you mine stone from rocks. Spades let you dig up placed seedlings and saplings. Hammers let you pick up crafting items, beehives, and tiles, which is why I now have a hammer in order to have uh, moved around the house a little bit. When you hover over any item in the world, you'll be shown what tools can be used to interact with it. Uh, with the cursor or one of the four tools. If you make yourself one of each, I'll give you a bunch of rocks. Don't ever say I don't give you things. Well, uh, you know, we can't say further than that, I suppose. Uh, very well. So what do we need for the other tools? I'm going to need pretty much just some more um, uh, sticks, really. And let me just click on these so that we get rid of the uh, notifications there. Right, so let's go ahead and make a bunch of sticks for this as well. There we are. I wonder if we're going to get any sawdust from the planks into sticks recipe. Oh, yes. Yeah, we do. Uh, let's pop that there for now. Actually, no, let's pop that in here. Now, one of the cool things about this is that when you're moving items from one inventory to another, you might get confused, or the game might get confused, when it isn't clear when you've got bunches of different inventories open because you want to be able to craft from all of them. If you click on the little circle there, you're basically telling the game to prioritize moving things with like shift click into that particular inventory, which I think is uh, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, right, so let's go ahead and get ourselves a wooden pickaxe and indeed a wooden spade. Oh no, we've run out of, uh, we've run out of six, my bad. Let me uh, get a few more then. One, two, that's good enough. There we are. And now I don't have enough blanks. Because I left them all in there, didn't I? Yep, yep, I did. Okay, there we go. Tonk. Perfect. Right, you can go in there. And we are good to go. Right, let's go and grab these rocks. Now, the rocks are how we're going to make the stone tools, obviously. Finding bees. Let's get to why you're really here. Bees. To get started on your beekeeping journey, you'll need to find yourself some bees out in the wild. Different species of bee can be found in different areas. Try having a look around for bees flying around. Eventually, they'll head back to their hive. To start, you'll need a plain old common bee. A bee from the forest and a bee from the shores. Once you find a hive, you can open it um, with the cursor to have a look inside and take any of the bees with you. You can pick up a hive with a hammer. Gently. I'm glad you specified gently, because uh, maybe I wouldn't have realized that that's what what, uh, what you meant. Though, we have got a bunch of stone now, so let me just have a look at the new recipes that have opened up. We can now make all of the uh, stone tools, which are, as you can imagine, much more durable, and we can also make some very, very fancy stone walls, which we will almost certainly be getting to. Uh, let's have a quick look. There we go. Uh, right, so we need to go and grab some bees. Now, at the moment, the bees are asleep. Most bees are. You can breed bees that will remain active at night, however. So we want a verge drone, since we need one from the, the shore, one from the forest, and one from the, uh, the just a, a common be as well. Now we've gone ahead and uh, jumped through the tutorial a little bit uh, and we've just set that hive up so it'll continue to breed. You get the drones, you put two drones together, they'll make a queen with the characteristics of that drone and thereby you can breed new species of bee, which I think is actually quite, quite marvellous. There we go. And uh, I always think it's probably best to uh, keep the hives producing where you can. Now, they're not necessarily going to produce anything for us right now, simply because it's nighttime and they're inactive. But you'll see the difference, the, the kind of exclamation mark versus the ellipsis lets you know which hives are not producing because, you know, it's nighttime or, or it's raining and they don't like the rain, and which ones can't because there's no queen there. So, let's go ahead and claim our first wild hive. And we could have gone ahead and, and uh, taken one of those ourselves, but uh, I, I prefer to be given new ones rather than take ones that are already someone's home. Tapping trees. What's brown and sticky? Well, okay. Yeah, I guess so. But I was thinking more about tree resin. 
damn it. Collecting resin from trees will let you treat your wood to make it more versatile and last longer for beekeeping purposes. To get resin from a tree, you'll need to craft a tree trap. You can reuse a tree tap by equipping it and clicking on a tree with the cursor. This will tap the tree and start automatically gathering resin for you. Once a tree is empty of resin, you won't be able to tap it again. All good things must come to an end. Which is quite sad, really. Uh, but very true. Okay, well, let's go ahead and make ourselves a tree tap. But uh, first and foremost, I want to start organizing my uh my chest we're gonna have a b chest specifically and that this chest will be here all of this can come with me elsewhere we're gonna drop these off in here instead and i think that will be fine also i should probably drop off the uh the stone as well that being said though kind of want to go and grab these stones uh we can now make a beehive but we're going to need a lot of things for that uh, but to make the tree tap, fairly simple little process, this one. We just need some uh, sticks and planks. Quite a lot of the early game stuff. Oop, I didn't use my sword properly there. Quite a lot of the early game items are just made with sticks and planks. It, we will be moving on to more difficult to craft items reasonably soon. But for now, we can just enjoy the fact that uh, things are not too hard for us to make. Right, so there we have two tree taps. Let's close everything down. Also get rid of that now we want two trees that we're not going to accidentally de destroy so uh, we're going to pop these ones over here across across the river there and we'll allow these to gather now they're going to do it gradually this bar indicates how much um material is in the tree itself before the the tree has been completely um drained and we'll, we'll realistically at that point need to chop the tree down and plant another tree so that we can uh, get items from that. As you can see, the trees that we planted earlier have already grown. The, the game does not make you wait over long for things. So it does have the day-night cycle and you will have to wait for some things here and there. Not only can you collect uh, stone though and uh, trees, but you can also collect flowers. And I hazard to say, you should, because bees require flowers in order to, uh, to do their thing. And later on, certain types of flowers will give the bees very specific quality. So you really do want to start collecting those early as you can. Now, with that done, let's uh, start looking on to some other items. There's flower power. Have you taken the time to stop and smell the flowers? I just did, actually. Your bees certainly will. You can pick up flowers with your cursor and place them near your hives for your bees to visit. The flowers visited by bees will slowly spread and grow. Later on, when you have the extractor, you'll be able to get flower seeds from your hive bee, uh, based on the flowers that you visited. You'll even be able to discover new hybrid flowers that can have direct effects on nearby bees, which is rather marvellous. Uh, we've also got advanced controls. At this point, you're probably sick of clicking things one by one. If only there was a quicker way to move stuff around. There it is. It's shift-click. Uh, if you have more than two menus open at a time, you'll see the little circle there, and you can uh, tell it where it needs to move things. We'll get another crate for that. I certainly don't mind that at all. Now that we have some bees and a beehive, you can start breeding bees. To breed bees, place two drones in the left-hand side input slot of a hive to create a queen. In a natural beehive, the queen will always inherit only the traits of the first drone. Once formed, the queen will then set to work and start producing honeycomb based on her productivity trait. Once the queen comes to the end of her lifespan, she'll produce offspring based on her fertility trait. All drones produced in natural beehives will be direct clones of the queen. Time to make an army of Beatrices. Uh, that sounds kind of terrifying, I'm not going to lie. Uh, let's go and grab some sap. If they, Oh, no, that was chopping the tree. The more or less opposite of what I wanted to do. There we go. Let's move you up there. And grab you as well. Tonk, tonk. There we are. Oh, did we not get enough? Oh. Did we get enough? Uh, yes, we did. We did get ten. I thought we only had nine for some reason. But there we go. We get another tree tap for that one. Nice. We can go ahead and place that down as well. Sure. Did we did we use up some of the uh, the sap? I'm not not sure about that one. Either way though, uh, let's go and drop these items off, shall we? Uh, let's pop these in there. At this point, I'm going to keep the flowers with me. I don't need that with me though. Uh, the shrub can also be planted. You know what, let's pop it over here. It doesn't really make too much of a difference. I've not really seen what shrubs can be used for, but uh, certainly 
we want the uh, the the acorns. Let's go ahead and grab our common bees. We want to make a, a new Beatrice after all. And with that done, let's go and place down our very first beehive. Though, hmm, I think we need a proper garden for our bees. Be right back. Okay, there we go. We've upgraded a little bit to a uh, to a stony uh, garden. I think it's going to look very nice as we place down our first beehive. Now, with that in place, I think we also need some pretty flowers around as well. So let's uh, get a couple of those for our bees to visit. We'll have two flowers flanking the hive. I think that is lovely. And later on, we might even be able to get ourselves a little lamp as well. But first and foremost, we need to get our army of Beatrices as uh, the book so uh, terrifyingly suggested. I, 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 okay, look, bee armies? No, 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 no. That sounds like the diabolical plan of some sort of evil overlord. And whilst normally I wouldn't shy away from any kind of diabolical plan, evil overlord like or not, I, uh, I just, I just, I just want to like bees. Okay, I just want to, just want to be one with nature. Not necessarily deforesting the everything and replacing it with stone. Oh, moving on. Oh, look, that bee likes me. Okay, I can't be all bad. The bees, the bees, uh, the bees appreciate my my sculpting of their 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 stone garden. Look, all right, I'm gonna grasp whatever whatever thin hope that I can. Uh, with that done, though, we should now start seeing that uh, our bees are going to start producing well, quite a lot of drones and quite a lot of honeycomb. How much do we already have? Let's have a quick glander in here. We've got four honeycomb at the moment, and we need a couple more drones. Well, our personal hive, uh, though it is still a natural hive, uh, will take a little while. Let's go ahead and oh, no, let's uh, go ahead and continue to manage the hives here and there and uh, keep things ticking over where we can. So that brings us up to seven in total. Let's go and see what this little natural hive down here has. Only one, that is a bit of a shame, but that is fine overall. Though I'm going to need to start harvesting the, the uh, drones from down here. I really should have dropped off a bunch of items, really, uh, because my inventory is gonna get rather full. There we go, let's uh, grab you. I believe the bees take up a single inventory space each. Uh, and honestly, that seems quite fair, if you ask me. Uh, but it does mean that it's going to take us a bit of time to get all of this going. Oh, oh dra damn blast. I'm moving them between the areas. That's not quite what I wanted to do. There we go. But the reach you have on inventory is quite extensive. And now that we're back home, let's check in on our queen. Oh, fantastic. Got a little bit more honeycomb as well. Okay, that actually brings us a uh, fair ways towards our goal. I must say, we have got a grand total of, uh, well, actually, let's just uh, quickly move these down. We've got six drones at the moment. So we need another four, and we've got all of the honeycomb that I need. So I will be right back once I have completed this quest. And a few minutes of inventory management and drone gathering later, we are ready to proceed. So there we go. We're going to get 10 new honeycombs here. And now picture perfect waiting around and pimp my hive will become available. Are you enjoying the peaceful world of Apico? Want to show off your amazing apiaries to the world? You can turn on photo mode at any time by pressing P. Photo mode will hide all the menus and buttons so that you can get yourself a cool screenshot. I actually really like it when games specifically give you a way of taking uh, taking screenshots inside. It's a bonus points if they give you uh, photo filters as well. At the beginning, you must find there's not too much that you can do during the night or while it's raining if you haven't got any bees that are active during those times. The bench item lets you take a nap. While you're dreaming of, bee, uh, of bees, time in the game will be sped up. This makes the day pass quicker, which affects your trees and saplings you've planted as well as helps weather end quicker. However, it won't speed up your beehives. Come on now, be realistic. But I approve of the bench. Let's uh, go ahead and pop that down. And our little workshop is more or less complete at this point. We can just go ahead and sit on the bench there. And after a few moments, our little dude will start to nod off. There we go, ponk, and things start speeding up in game. Uh, but with that done, pimp my hive. Now, honeycomb is delicious and crunchy. Stop eating it all. But there are far more useful things your bees could be producing. For that, you'll need to create your very first proper beehive out of wood and some of that honeycomb you've been making. Once you have one, you'll be able to use hive frames for gathering produce from your bees. 
Plus, with a man-made hive, you'll not only be able to get different and more valuable produce, but you'll also be able to start cross-breeding different bee species and start discovering new ones. Fantastic. We've got to get a uh, basic hive, and we will get two hive frames to go along with it. But whilst all of that is going on, let's actually uh, take a look around the gate altar. Hold shift for info. Okay. Uh, hmm. I see. Gate idle. Uh... No idea, but since you're telling me to smack it with my hammer. Uh, tonk. And I now have... Alright, I, I guess I've just got a thing. I approve, I think. Uh, I don't... I don't... <laughs> Actually, no. On the second thought, I really don't approve. You shouldn't just go randomly around the world destroying altars. How ridiculously undapper. I mean, this one, I can only assume, I can only hope, was meant for me to find and take. But still, my goodness. What else have we got here? We've got quite a few things here, actually. An arc wood lantern can be picked up with a hammer. Okay, well, I mean, this one I don't mind taking. Honk. We're going to take that and put it over in our garden. And the pier sign. Hold shift for info. What's all this about, then? Uh, I mean, ferry info. Next, ferry due. Full game. Release o'clock. <laughs> I approve. There are going to be multiple uh, multiple biomes, if not whole uh, islands that you can go to, from what I understand. Let's uh, pop this down, though. Let's have a little awkward lantern right in the middle of our garden. Oh, that's lovely. I like it a lot. But we need to set up a new area ready for us to make a uh, new beehive. But how does one make such a beehive? Oh, we use resin for this, but uh, and something else that I don't know yet. Duly noted. Uh, to make this beehive, we have everything that we need available to us. So, plonk, there we go. Uh, we can make uh, the um, hive frames out of honeycomb and resin. We can make the uh, uncapping bench, which we would use on filled frames from a, a hive uh, to, to get uh, uncapped frames, and then we would have to put those in an extractor. We will get to those in a moment, though. The tutorial will lead us through. But first and foremost, let's keep our original natural hive going. Uh, where's my bee chest? This is my bee chest. So let's uh, pop uh, the bees down there, I think would be wise. Uh, okay, well, we are going to need to make a new garden, I feel to have the gate idle and the gate altar in, and also our very first beehive, uh, or rather, you know, man-made frame beehive. So I shall bring it back in just a moment. Okay, I think this will do. So we're gonna claim our two um, uh, proper frames. Now you have a man-made hive, you'll be able to start crossbreeding different bee species. When you create a queen in a man-made hive, instead of only having the traits of the primary drone, it will inherit the selection of traits from both drones and can become a hybrid. You can use a Punnett square to predict offspring traits. Anyone who played the uh, the Minecraft mod that this probably draws a significant amount of inspiration from will be very familiar with uh, how all of this works. Hybrid queens have a chance that their offspring will mutate and become a completely new species. To get started, crossbreed a common and a forest drone together into a common forest queen and see if you can get a verdant species as one of the offspring. Very well. We will do our darndest. Uh, let's go ahead and pop this, uh, our first hive. Oh, we'll probably end up with a couple of these. But the first thing we're going to need with this one is we need basic hives in there. They can't do anything without the basic hives. And we want a common and a forest drone. So let's go ahead and set all of that up. There we are. Lovely. We also need a, uh, a new shrine as well. So while we're waiting for that, let's go ahead and create a little bit of a new shrine area for the... Oh, drat. I need to dig that one up for our the <laughs> gate shrine, which we maybe stole. I'm not going to uh, admit to anything. I have it... Uh, I have been advised by my legal counsel that uh, the best defense in this particular instance is to say nothing at all, at all and just hope that people ah, forgive me because let's let's be honest it's on camera if I just don't incriminate myself by trying to justify it or defend what I did then maybe just maybe they will take pity on me 
let's go ahead and pop this down here. And grab you. There. No, no, no. There we go. Now, I'm assuming that I have to put the idol in there. I'm not entirely sure, but let's give it a shot. Tonk. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm okay with that. I'll maybe get some uh, nice lamps there or something in the future. Uh, we do want a bunch of fla Ooh, flowers down here. The The book is actually a uh, is, is an item, so if you've got it on your hotbar, you can activate it. Uh, now, I'm not going to be able to put lilies in here, but I... Oh, I, no, apparently I can. Uh, I take it back. I don't think I should, though, but... Let's go ahead and make this one a little bit more more full of uh, flowers. There we go. That should be lovely. And as you can see, as the bees continue to visit them, they, they do develop further and uh, get get uh, uh, more... Oh, let me grab that out of the way. They seem to bloom a little bit more and uh, start to grow around uh, areas where the bees are visiting regularly. Now... What is the next thing that we need to do? We're going to need to wait on the Verdant Drone, but uh, and camping frames. Now that you have man-made hive, you can craft hive frames to place in the beehive. A hive will slowly fill up your frames during the lifespan of a queen, based on her productivity trait. Once you have a filled frame, you'll need to uncap it to extract the treats inside. Craft an uncapping bench and open it up. Place a filled frame of any of the input slots on the left and you'll see another handle appear. Drag the handle down to uncap your frames. You'll need three scrapes per frame. You'll also get some nice goopy propolis, which we'll be needing later. Very well. Uh, so we're going to need a new room then. Well, you know what's coming up next. And here we go. We've got everything ready, including a new room for our uncapping bench. So the first thing we need to do is make two new uh, basic frames. Then we have everything together to make this. And since we're in a position, oh, well, not quite in a position actually to make the rest of the frames, this will have to do for now then, I suppose. So we'll pop this down right by there. And since I've already got a couple of chests hanging around, I may as well make use of these as well. So to grab that, we can just tuck that in the corner there along with this one as well, for all of the goodies that we're going to be getting from the uh, man-made hives. Now, let's go and have a look if we've been lucky. We are unfortunately not lucky. But we can click on this one, Quick Queen. It'll take whatever drones are available and uh, immediately pop them across. Now, you may be noticing that there are um, uh, like durability bars for the frames. That is something that we're going to have to uh, be very careful of because we are going to need a lot of those frames, but they do run down. But let's go ahead and uncap our very first frame. There we go, pomp, and we have got an uncapped basic frame. Now, uh, that gives us uh, two more frames. Uh, extracting honey. With your uncapped frames, you can now spin them senseless and shake them down for every last drop of honey. Craft yourself an extractor and open it up. You'll need to put uncapped frames in the left input slot. Once you do, you'll see another handle appear. This time you need to pull down the handle to start spinning the extractor. The faster it spins, the quicker it will produce your frames. When a frame is spun completely, you'll get a whole bunch of items, the amount of which is based on the productivity trait of the queen that filled them. Marvellous. Let's get to that straight away. Uh, now then... Now that we have the frames, I believe we will have everything else we need. Oh, we're actually shy. A little bit of uh, some uh, planks. That won't be a problem. There we go. All we need, plonk. Perfect. Uh, actually, this should all be going down here, so let's uh, make sure that that happens. There we are. Um, actually, as this is a B product, I would like it to be kept. Well, you know what? No, I don't want it kept in that workroom. Uh, that should be kept over here. That seems to make the most sense to me. Uh, let's go ahead and oop, I need to actually place that down rather than drop it on the ground. There we go. And now we can start spinning this. Pull that down and it starts spinning. We'll pull it down a couple of times and it'll start spinning really quickly. I think 50 is about as fast as you can possibly get it. Yeah, 50 revolutions per minute, but it gradually loses that momentum. But if you put a couple of frames in there, it'll spin one and then it'll move on to the next, then it'll move on to the next. So it's a little bit of automation there. But out pops an, a fresh empty frame and we get some beeswax, some bee pollen uh, used in crafting, just not in the demo. 
Womp womp. Uh, swarm wart seeds can be planted on grass to grow into a flower. No special effect of this one, though, but uh, that's perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and uh, drop uh, this off for now. We are going to need this, though. Uh, we're going to want that for a couple of things, actually. We'll also drop off this pollen there as well. Uh, let's go ahead and plant some of these flowers. Uh, sure, we're, we're making this area a little bit more... A little bit more... Uh, Wild in a domesticated way. <laughs> Fake wild. Uh, we'll go with that. Uh, now, what did we want that for? There we go. We need beeswax to make the lanterns. All right. Well, uh, we will store that one there for the time being then. And quickly get another queen working in this hive. Now that I've managed to collect a couple of uh, more uh, honeycombs, we can go ahead and make two more frames because a lot of the work early on is in ferrying frames back and forth to your man-made hives because without them you can't get any any items and you, I, I believe you basically lose progress on it as it goes ah oh, damn it we've got a pure breed common drone uh well we'll try our best to to get uh another drone uh, another forest drone. Let's have a look. It is a pure breed common queen. Well, poop. Okay, so we're going to have to wait a little bit longer to get the uh, the verdant queen. Uh, for that, I think it's probably going to be wise if I go ahead and see if I can't find some wild um, forest drones and use them to increase the odds of us getting the Verdant Queen. Let's have a look. Are there any more forest hives? I'm actually not seeing any. That's a bit of a problem. Mind you, going out in the day is not exactly the best, uh, sorry, in the night is not exactly the best time to be looking for bees, since it's much easier to spot them when they're buzzing around visiting flowers. But uh, I believe there is a forest hive over here, or two, in fact, as the case may be. Uh, let's grab these. Okay, perfect. We've got enough to uh, get a couple of drones out of here and get a new queen on the go. It is generally very important, in my opinion, to visit the wild hives and keep them going. In fact, they are the only source of actual honeycombs that uh, I'm aware of, at the very least. So very much worth visiting because we need those to make the frames. And as you've seen, they will eventually run down and run out. So you don't want to to assume that just because you've made it to man-made hives, that that is the end of that journey. It is categorically not. Uh, let's visit you down here. Hello. Let's get that on the go as well and pick up all of that delicious, delicious honeycomb that we're not allowed to eat all of. Fair enough. Uh, right, have I got too many drones? I've probably got a few too many drones. Got way too many common drones, uh, and that is going to be a bit of a problem for me, but uh, we'll eventually be able to do something with that, I believe. Though I'm not sure if that is necessarily in the, uh, in the, the, the base game. Uh, sorry, in the demo, I should say. All right, looks like I'm going to have to pass a little bit of time and wait for all the hives to be ready. Okay, we've got our first hybrid flowers, the honeybriar seeds, which give minus one stability. Now, I'm not sure we necessarily want to plant that one, um, though it might be stability in, in the genetics, so they, they will uh, breed hybrids faster. I'm not really sure. But we've also got the hives bane seeds, uh, which gives plus one lifespan to bees, which I am extremely, extremely happy to have gotten. Let's go ahead and plant some of these in our little uh, garden over here. Now, obviously, if you're having trouble getting uh, getting certain hybrids, one of the things you can do is you can just get more man-made hives, and that is probably a reasonable idea, if I'm perfectly honest. So uh, let's go ahead and see about doing something along those lines. Now, what is required for that? We're going to need... Uh, there we are. The kicker, once again, is we're going to need uh, plenty of um honeycomb and we're using that for a lot of different things right now so there is a very strong reason to keep plenty of uh of um, bees uh natural hives around specifically just so you have more uh man-made hives on the go and indeed the the frames themselves probably the more important of the two 
honestly. Right, let's grab these filled frames. At the moment, a lot of my time is spent just uh, ducking back and forth, uh, moving the filled frames and spinning them and, 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 ca and capping them, etc., etc. And slowly but surely, we're going to get closer to getting our Verdant drone. So I shall bring it back when we've got one. And here we go, finally. It took me a little while and uh, a few upgrades to the base, but we have got ourselves a Verdant Drone. Now then, let's have a quick look in here. Verdant Drone. Now that you have a man-made hive, you'll be able to start crossbreeding different bee species, and ultimately we have crossbred a forest drone and a common drone through many versions of getting a uh, common forest hybrids and then ending up with purebred commons or purebred forest but we have finally got there and we are now going to claim the apiarist almanac that book we just gave you is one of the most important guides for any aspiring beekeeper you can open it at any time by pressing b even if you don't have it on you the apiarist almanac has details on all different species of bees you've discovered and the traits they can spawn with if you click any of the question marks, or undiscovered species, you'll get a hint at the sort of hybrid and conditions that are needed to find that species. Requirement for the next one, we need to get a vibrant bee. And for this, we will get two man-made hives. We still don't quite have all of the extracted honey that we want, but now that we have the Apiarist Almanac, here we go. Uh, common bee, Bombus communia. The common bee is found practically everywhere on the Archipelago, uh, archipelago, a generally friendly, dependable, and well-rounded species. It forms the backbone of our modern agriculture. Lifespan, normal to short, productivity, slow to, uh, slowest to slow. Fertility is fertile to fecund. Stability is normal to stable. The common bee is diurnal and enjoys temperate climate. And so with this, you can see the, the sort of stats that are hidden inside each bee. Uh, forest drones... Uh, sorry, forest bees. Originally a marshland species, the forest bee, has since migrated to lusher forests. It continues to build in trees, a survival trick originally used to protect the hive from swamp water. Uh, it is always fertile. There is no um, drift there. Uh, stability is normal to stable. Productivity is slowest to slow. And lifespan is long to normal. So you can end up with a, with a long-lived bee from the forest. And verge. Unlike its land-based cousins, the verge bee thrives in water. While other species might avoid inclement weather, such as rain, this species will continue to be active. It's got a normal lifespan, slow to normal, so it's one of the highest in terms of productivity. Fertility is fertile, stability is normal. The verge bee is diurnal and enjoys temperate climate. This species loves the rain. And then with this, we can have, see uh, it's a diurnal species, descended from uh, communia and silver families. So, forest and common. Uh, the, well, wouldn't we have you in there already? Maybe I just need to grab you there. There we go. We need to actually, uh, actually have you in our inventory for it to count. Uh, Bombus florio was the first domesticated bee species in the archipelago. Breeding the verdant bee is a common rite of passage for many new beekeepers starting their uh, apiculture journey. Lifespan is long, normal, or short. Productivity is slow to slow. Fertility is fertile to fecund, and stability is normal to stable. The verdant bee is diurnal and enjoys temperate climates. Uh, rare species nowadays, old almanacs, describe a communa and pen mix. So that would be verge plus a common. So, given that, let's open up our bee chest, whomp, and then let's start adding in some bees. We've got a verdant drone here as well, marvellous. Uh, we've got a purebred common there, that's actually going to be quite useful. And uh, let's see about breeding a... Uh, uh, was it vibrant that we were going for? Uh, we got a oh, purebred common. Excellent. That means I don't need to worry over much on that one. Uh, do we have any purebreds? Because we don't want to use hybrids. Oh, well, you can, actually, because you might inherit from the forest verge combo. Which, you know what? Sure, let's, uh, let's go ahead and just drop that in there and see what nature gives us. Now, I'm going to busy myself with uh, getting some of these frames emptied out. Oh my lord, there's quite a few of them. Also, we need to make sure that uh, our common, uh, sorry, our wild hives are being turned over and that there are new queens in them constantly producing. And with that, everything is moving forward. So I shall bring you back in a moment. And it looks like we've just completed another one of our goals. So let's go ahead and have a look at that one. 
extracting honey. We'll get more honey. Uh, fair enough, I suppose. Uh, floriculture. Now that you have an extractor and would have noticed that you sometimes get flower seeds from your frames, these seeds are based on the flowers you, your bees visit. And if you're lucky, these seeds will be hybrid flowers that can be planted into completely new species. Swarmwort, beekeepers delight, and honey rose can all pair with each other to form three new species, each with their own special effect. I've even heard of one bee species that can only be found when certain types of flowers are nearby. Oh, very well. We've actually got a couple of uh, flower species uh, available to us. So let's have a look in here. We might actually have everything we need. Yes, we did. Fantastic. Claim that. Uh, Apiarist Almanac. Let's go ahead and have a quick look-see and uh, find out if we have everything we need down there. Now, the species of flower that I have available to me right now, we've already seen the hivesbane seeds and uh, planted a couple of these, but you may not have seen the uh, golden, uh, is it golden rod? It's go yeah, golden rod seeds. Hold shift for info, plus productivity, which I'm always a fan of. Let's get some uh, more productivity there. Now, there was one other thing I really wanted to do, and that was uh, the have. A little hive over here if I can. We'll pop these down like so, just to make a, a little bit of room. There's one last hive that we aren't actually kind of domesticating. I mean, it's a wild hive, but you know what I mean. We've got loads of wild hives. There we go. We'll have some uh, verge uh, species uh, going over there as well. I think that would be Marvellous. Now let's keep that going. We've got a lot of wild, uh, sorry, honeycomb in there. Well, I guess it is wild honeycomb. Uh, there we go. Let's keep those all going. Now let's have a look if we were lucky. We did. We've got a vibrant drone. Now we don't know anything about a microscope. I don't even know if we can actually build that in the, the demo so far. The Alpinist Almanac. There we go. We get two new hives. Not that we've got anywhere to put them right now. I'd have to build a bit more. But that is more or less all there is for the demo. We're sad to say that all good things must come to an end, including this demo. Thank you so much for playing. We really hope you had such a great time. That's a lovely sentiment there. In terms of what's next for Apico, we have so many features we want to add, including 30 different bee species to discover, a town to sell your wares, new biomes and islands to explore, tier two and tier three machine upgrades, different outfits and decorative items. We would love to hear what you think of Apico. Come join us on Discord. Their Discord is actually quite uh, quite lovely. I must say, I've been in there for a few days now. It's actually a very, very pleasant place to be. Lots and lots of real life bee pictures. You know, it's honestly a rather lovely place to, to pop in every now and then, just to have a look at all the pictures people have been taking of their beautiful blooming gardens. Uh, right, you can see the latest day of updates. Oh yes, that too. But I spend an inordinate amount of time looking at the pictures of the bees, I'm going to be honest. But uh, you can talk with the developers, they're actually quite friendly as well, as you might expect from someone making this sort of game. If you're not ready to leave the world of Apico though, we understand. Have one last challenge from this. And now, this is actually quite a, a difficult challenge, I'm going to be honest. Uh, Dream Bee is the kind of the, the peak of that. We'd have to go through and climb all of the, well, quite a few of the various different hybrid bees, and then finally get some Dream Bees. Uh, to boot as well. Though, uh, of course, we need to actually uh, take one of you out of here. There we go. Let's pop you into my inventory. There we are. And then that will be registered as well. Now, stability normal. Facility is fertile to fecund. Productivity is fast to normal. That's actually pretty cool. And lifespan is long to normal. So uh, the uh, vibrant bee is actually quite a uh, quite an interesting one. But that's going to be it for this first taste. We've more or less covered all of the, the mechanical content that the game has, but there's an awful lot that you can do. And just taking a peek onto the Discord with people's screenshots of their little uh, bee gardens has been a joy. So I welcome you to check out the demo yourself and uh, definitely add it to your Steam wish list and uh, look forward to your comments down below. But that's going to be it from me and from all of the bees in our little garden here. So until next time, and as always, do take care.